Let me get my hat all straight. Hello, everybody. Good to see y'all. Hey, Benson. Good to see you. Hello, hello. And uh, glad everyone can make it here on a, uh, a Tuesday afternoon. We know who the serious people are. So good to see you, Charmaine and Elizabeth. Hello, Liz. I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Jason, good to see you. James and Myla and Paulette and Rich and Ron, welcome. So we got a small, cozy group. I'm sure more people will chime in um, just to make sure that everything's working and everyone can hear me and see me. Just type in, uh, let's see, one word that describes how you're feeling right now. Put that in the chat right now. Use one word that describes how you're feeling. We call it our one word opener. That'll be our little um, telephone here for the next, uh, I don't know, 17 hours. I think that's, we should wrap it up within that amount of time, shouldn't we, Benson? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Paulette's very much looking forward to this. She's exhausted. You only got 17 more hours to go. It's going to be fantastic. No, it's going to be <laughs> short and sweet. Going to get you a lot of information and make sure that it's a really good use of your time. Um, and I think we should just go ahead and uh, see Elizabeth and Paulette. You guys the only one that can hear me. Jason, how you feeling, buddy? There you go, Ron. Thanks, bud, for your participation. Chris, good to see you. I know you were excited about this. And super duper. All right. We are broadcasting. Let me check the, the YouTubes. Make sure we're live over there and looking good. Huh. It says we're going, but I don't really see it. But uh, this is my first time. Was this five now watching now? Do you have to hit something here? Yeah, there isn't anything showing. But it, it might be my, because show we Zoom. Hmm. Let's see. Sorry, I've always, I always want a better, smoother start to these things, but the kind the, the, what you call it, the technician when you're the producer and the talent and the director and the writer all at the same time, it's tough. Hold on. It says it's on, it says it's public. It might help if you stop the live and then redo it. I the, uh, kind the of stream did that. Oh, wait a minute. View and live control room. I think I have to push go here, right? Do I? Oh, there's Jason. Jason, that's you on YouTube. You can see it. I see your chat. You can see okay? No, I'm looking on YouTube and it, there isn't anything there. It just says your name. Jason says he can see it though. Interesting. Okay. Okay, well, let me put the, uh, if you want to join us, if you can't see us on YouTube, let me grab the, the Zoom link real quick and then we'll just go ahead and get started. Just if you want to come over and, and join us on the on the private line there so if i come back over here to my youtube and we'll just get going if you can't see us on youtube click this link that interesting well i ain't got no chat over here for them to see either all right well it says there's seven people watching. Hopefully you guys can see us and we'll just go ahead and get started. All right. Thanks, Marcus. I appreciate you. Yeah, Marcus, you are seeing us on Zoom, though. I was trying to see if the people on YouTube could see us. That was the whole thing. But, oh, okay, well. I see you. All right. Welcome. Say again. It's working now. Oh, it is? Okay, cool. Maybe yep. there's a delay. But anyway. All right, y'all. Yeah, Elizabeth, we got 17 hours. We'll figure it out. <laughs> um well, welcome everybody. You know I'm a big fan of Privy, and Benson's a good friend of mine. If you've been around Epic for a while, you know you know Benson. You know how much I love Privy. You probably sat in on some of our Privy sessions, and we bought properties together live using uh, the Privy software. It's really good at, at helping you locate the discounted deals that are right there on the market for everybody to see, and good for flips, good for discounts. Good. Well, we got a subject too, and I have got a great rental out of that that whole process. So that was awesome too. But um, they've added a new feature. So it's kind of been focused mostly on, on the flipping potential and where all the investor flipping activity is at. But they've got a new feature that uh, can help you find some cash flow, particularly that's kind of important in this day and age of a high interest environment in 2023. So I'm just going to turn it over to Benson and let him show you what he got. And just so you guys know, I shouldn't have done that. That's really bad etiquette as far as the thing. Here we go. But wait. Um, but uh, you're like the first people to see this. This was just released. So mm -hmm. last week we did a little preview. He wasn't, the marketing team didn't want him to show it yet. So we didn't even show anything, but now you guys get to see it all here firsthand and you're, you're first to the party. All right, Benson, 
Uh, take it away, buddy. I'm going to go ahead and just um, mute myself and turn my camera off, but I will be here if you need anything, okay? Awesome. I appreciate that. Yep. Cool. Well, um, yeah, you're right, Matt. We for So for many years, we were focused on, you know, finding deeply discounted deals that you could basically do anything with. And it happened to fit the needs of a lot of fix and flippers and wholesalers, but we had lots of people who were doing rentals who were also using Privy for doing comping and establishing uh, as is value after repair value. So a lot of times when landlords are finding properties, they measure them from you know two basic perspectives, right? Um, cash flow, which is just the difference between what you can what your expenses are and what you can rent it out as, but also uh, a, a discount, right? Percentage of ARV is usually how we measure, you know, how good of a discount that we have on our properties. And so it, it really fit the needs of a lot of different people. But for many years, you know, so many people were requesting like, like can you guys get more rental data? Can you get more um, you know, universal, um, you know, normalized rental data? Because one of the problems with rental data is it's really fragmented. There's, there's um, depending upon where you're looking, like one market, like, might have um, where it's it's customary for agents to put listings, rental listings in the MLS. And you go to another market and there's no rental listings in the MLS. And then they use some lo local website or maybe they use Zillow or you know some areas like um, Craigslist is one of the best ways to find rental uh, information. So it's really fragmented and kind of just broken up. And uh, I think one of the companies that did it the best for a while was a company called Rentometer. And and even then, it's still kind of a black box, right? You don't really know what it is you're looking at. So it was always a goal of ours to provide, you know, high quality rental data based off of, of actual listings that have good information about them to our users so that they could analyze their rental uh, properties to determine uh, what the property will rent for and then eventually um, what the cash flow is. Uh, and then we, we started to do that. And then we're like, okay, now we need like filters. We want to find some really good filters because where, where people really love Privy as well as the automation and being able to enter what it is you're looking for in the system and then have the system do the heavy lifting for you. So you're not, you know, running, you know, complex calculations. You don't have to break out a spreadsheet or a financial calculator to figure out, you know, how to measure if, whether or not a property is a good deal. So we've been spending the last probably six months in really perfecting that process doing research, talking to landlords, talking to property management companies, and figuring out what they're doing in their business to be able to analyze properties, determine if they make sense financially, and then build that all into Privy's backend, and then eventually provide it to you guys. So I'm extremely excited. We did finally launch this, and um, I'm going to be showing that. As soon as I can get um, screen sharing ability, Matt, that would be great. I'll be able to show you exactly how that works. And I will do kind of a brief recap of Privy in general, just so we know what we're looking at and what it is that we have there um, that you can you can leverage from both buy, finding deals at a discount and then being able to look at those areas to see what the property will cash flow for. So let me go ahead and do that right there. All right, cool. So. Um, this is the Privy software. If you haven't seen it before, you know, we likely already have some people that are in the system, um, you know, already Privy users that are that are uh, watching. And that's great. This is going to be a refresher for you, maybe teach you some new things. If you haven't seen Privy before, uh, Privy, it's a web-based application. You can access it from any device that has an internet connection. And um, this right here is our coverage map. So this is important to to clarify because we're the only platform in the country that has direct to MLS data on scale. So what that means is that we've actually go and we negotiate directly with the MLSs in the areas where you see blue on the map to get that direct feed. And so it's not aggregated. It doesn't come from a third party. It's direct. And that makes it the most um, accurate uh, the most timely, the, the richest information available for analyzing properties, running comps, um, you know, really researching markets, doing your local market research to figure out what a deal really is in your target area, uh, as well as identifying potential opportunities. 
So we've already gone um, over 90 markets with direct, where you see the pink is where the markets we're currently working on. And now we've hired actually somebody who is in where we call our compliance department to go and, and maintain all those relationships and get more going. Um, where you see the black and the yellow is the, is the nationwide data we have for county and public record data, as well as what's called third-party MLS data. That's what you might find in some of our great competitors like a prop stream or like a batch leads. Um, they don't have the direct. So it was always our goal to just improve the quality of the data overall. And we've been doing that. Fortunately, or unfortunately, however you look at it, it it's a long process. And so it doesn't just happen overnight. You have to go on a one by one by one basis. And there's hundreds and hundreds of MLSs. Now, the majority of the MLSs that are out there are in rural areas where we probably shouldn't be investing anyway, but likely we won't have in privy. So we're going to get all the major areas, the major cities, second and third tier cities, and probably here within the next four or five months, we'll have about 80 to 90 percent coverage of all the major populated areas, all the areas you're going to want to be investing anyway. Okay, so that's a kind of a work in progress. Now, one of the things that we discovered early on is that a lot of investors, they, they invest or they, they do their, their marketing and deal searching based off of um, what's called I mean, convenience, right? Like where they live, what's comfortable, what's familiar, what's convenient is where they look for deals. And that typically ends up being their own backyard. Now, in general, that's not a horrible thing, as long as you live in an area where there's good investor activity and there's good data and there's actually uh, financial viability for an investment business to succeed in that market. And that's actually usually not the case. So there, there are some markets, there's a spectrum of markets where they're just really good and, and ripe for the picking. And there's other markets you just completely should be avoiding. Now, if I click this button over here on the, on the left, um, we've got these major ones here. This one here at the top is the one that you're going to want to use to find those deeply discounted deals. So the, the best way to find a deal is to find that unrenovated house that's next door or down the street from the renovated house. That's what creates the margins. The renovated house that's sold for $400,000 turns the $200,000 unrenovated house that's, that's a comp into a deal. And so that's always been the strategy. Now, a lot of our clients that use Privy for um, you know, looking at the LTR or the, like the, the rental perspective they love that situation because they can get a property in, say, which you might heard of a Burr. It's a, it's a hybrid approach. You're buying it from the perspective of a fix and flipper, but instead of selling that property after you've acquired it, you keep it as a rental. And so that's buy, renovate, rent, refinance, and repeat. So it's, it's a cyclical approach where you're getting the best of both worlds. You're buying a property that would maybe get you know rented at a say $1,000 a month in an unrehabbed uh, condition, but then they fix it up, increase the value, and now it'll rent out for $1,800 a month. And now you've got a bunch of equity that you can borrow against and go do your next project, right? Um, sometimes you don't have to do a whole renovation to get that some of those benefits. And maybe it's just a uh, you know paint and carpet situation. Maybe you just go in there and it just needs a, a deep cleaning to get it ready for rental. And sometimes that can increase the values as well. So I do like to look for rental properties in high investor activity areas because it does create margins and it creates options. So when I click that button here at the top, it's going to plot on the map where all of the investor activity is located. So it's essentially like a visual heat map. But instead of it being like a bunch of graphs and um, you know lines and you know pie charts and spreadsheets, which are really difficult to make uh, you know intelligent decisions on. We basically use this, this visual map so you can see where we have the large circles in large numbers is where investors are doing deals. Now, another thing that we've noticed over the years is that a raising tide raises all ships. So even in areas where mostly maybe we're looking for, for properties that have good margins because there's fix and flips happening in a market, that actually helps people who are landlords in those markets. Because when, when there's demand in an area, people start moving there. There's fix and flips. The values of, of properties are going up. There's a higher rate of appreciation than there would be if there wasn't an investor activity there and there weren't anybody investing in those, those markets, in those neighborhoods. So you get, you get higher rates of appreciation. That's great for landlords. 
So it is good to look at these areas, um, not just from you know thinking about a wholesale or a fix and flip perspective, but also thinking that, you know what, if, if I'm a landlord, I want to be where people are fix and flipping because that will help the value of my house go up. It'll help in, you know, change the trajectory of the rental rates. Um, and then next thing you know, too, the, the government comes in, they start investing in infrastructure. Next thing you know, they're paving roads and they're putting in new street lights and new bus stops and then a Starbucks and it moves in. And then, then you got some restaurants and all that stuff is related. And a lot of the times when people are going to look for rental properties, they're looking for you know, good economic conditions. You know, people are moving there, there's jobs, um, you know, there's low unemployment and there's, you know, a bunch of other, you know, metrics that people use, but a lot of it is related, right? So to investor activity. So if I was going to look for, say, a rental property, I likely would want to be in an area that has good investment activity. So, you know, we're talking about areas like Kansas City and St. Louis, you know, the Midwest does happen to have the majority of the investor activity. Um, and it actually turns out the Midwest, because of the price ranges, um, gives you better metrics on, on uh, cash flowing properties too. So there's there's four major ways to measure a property from a cash flow perspective. So I'll show you that here in a second, but let's drill down to one of these markets. So this is the Indianapolis market, has good investor activity, people are flipping there, there's lots of wholesalers happening. Um, they're going in and they're investing in these areas from, you know, we are as investors, but also um, you know, the local governments are. And so it's everything's just going good in these areas. And then we can look to see, you know, who are, you know, doing the flips. What does a flip look like? What are they buying them for? What are they selling them for? Um, the other thing that I realized too is that, you know, from most investors who are active that are have a little bit of experience, they don't just focus on one strategy. They look at any property that comes across their desk and they're figuring out, you know, where does this house fit? Is this house going to be a better rental property for me? Is it going to, you know, maybe I don't have the bandwidth for it, so I'm just going to do a quick wholesale and make a five or ten thousand dollars, or you know, maybe it makes a lot more sense to just do a complete fix and flip and just be in and out of that property. So, you know, I wouldn't pigeonhole yourself and call yourself just one thing or another. Like, look at each property and what's the highest and best use of it, and you'll find that you know some properties actually fit in multiple categories, um, but other properties just might make sense. Uh, that you just don't have the bandwidth for like a full renovation because, you know, maybe you're all your crews are busy and, you know, maybe you're a landlord and you've got, you know, really good marketing, but you just don't have, you know, the 20% to put down on a house. So, you know, maybe you decided to just wholesale that deal. So, you know, keep an open uh, perspective, keep an open mind about, about deal flow. Uh, don't turn away anything if you can make money on it, right? Um, so this property right here, is a house that was just fixed and flipped. And if we scroll down here to below the, um, well, let me, actually this, this report right here, this is a, called a comparative market analysis. This is one of the benefits of using the Privy platform is that we build these for you automatically. I'm, I'm a licensed agent. I've been in the business for over 20 years. I've got access to the MLS. And for me to come and build a report like this manually and put all of the data that comes in from these multiple sources, there's different, uh, rental data sources, there's county record and public record and MLS data. Like it would take me all day to build something like this. But Privy is building one of these for the um, for every single property in the US automatically. So it pulls all this information into one space and it also pulls the comparables. So we can look at the sales comps for this house to understand what other houses are selling for. And then we can see the rental comps as well. The rental comps are the purple ones. So we use an algorithm to automatically do this for you. So you don't have to be an expert. And honestly, comping is more of an art than it is a science. And it's one of those places where a lot of people get hung up, where they just don't, they're not really sure what it is they're looking at. And they're not really sure to like how to determine the after repair value, how to determine the as is value. And then certainly not being able to determine, you know, some of the analytics that we can use to anal analyze rental property. So we do give you the ability to adjust this though. So on the first pass, we use like the major property characteristics to run comparables. So, but we give you the ability to adjust all of this. You can adjust the tolerance on the square feet, um, on lot size. You can, uh, we match up stories to start. So we're only gonna show you ranch style 
uh, comparables for this house. It's going to be within between 15 and 20 percent of the square footage, plus or minus. Um, so we we do a lot of that heavy lifting for you. Uh, but we do give you the ability to see everything there if you want. So you can actually remove the algorithm and just see everything that's here. And you're going to see here that there's a lot more data that's in this area that we just hid because they weren't similar enough to the subject property. So we're doing that for you. So it's going to save you a ton of time so you don't get stuck in trying to analyze properties and comping. The other thing that we do is um, on properties that look like fix and flips, we put together the side-by-side -side information so you can see the before and after. And it will really help you understand like what a deal is um, in your particular market. So this is what the house looked like before it was renovated. This was purchased back in June of last year. And here's what it looked like completely unrenovated. So the house was you know, really rough. You can see here that they, um, you know, you can, they opened this porch up, took it back to how it was you know, originally, you know, complete renovation of the exterior. Um, this was an on-market deal. So that's another one of the things that I've learned by doing my local market research in different areas is that there are more deals that are deeply discounted that you can get from the MLS than you likely think there are. And um, based off of what we've done um, in our analytics and looking at those numbers, it's anywhere from like 60 to 70% of all deals are purchased from the MLS. So if you're ignoring on-market deals as a significant source of your deal flow, you're likely missing out on the majority of the stuff that's out there. And it's already hard enough to find a good deal as it is. Why make it more difficult on yourself than it needs to be? So, so again, open, have an open mind. It's just that for many years, you know, there was just a lot of messaging out there, misinformation that said that you could only find stuff off market. And that's just not the case. And the data confirms it. This particular property was from the MLS. They bought it for 70 grand. They sold it for 160 grand. They had a $90,000 gross profit, and that would be 44% of the ARV. So uh, 70,000 is 44% of 160. 44%, that's a great deal. That's a good deal even in a Midwest market where you got lower prices. Um, if that was in LA, in Beverly Hills, I mean, that would be one of those unicorn deals, but you just don't find them very often in those high-priced areas at that deep of discount. Now, over here on the right, you can actually see the after photos. So let's go ahead and expand this and we'll get to see like, what does it look like after it's been renovated? So obviously complete gut, redid everything inside. It looks absolutely amazing. The kitchen was, you know, light and bright. It looks like they may have even um, opened it up. It looks like they had, a, there was a wall here before. They just made it open, um, you know, granite countertops, you know, luxury vinyl planking, uh, you know, new gray paint, you know, you can see here they didn't they didn't spend a ton a ton of money on this because you know this is probably a, a you know sixty dollar vanity from Home Depot which is there's nothing wrong with that that's part of the other things that you learn of by looking at these photos that we have in Privy that you can't find in other platforms by the way because this these do come from the MLS is you can really see the quality of the renovation that people are doing you can see here they didn't even replace all of the um, you know, the door casings and maybe the baseboards they did, but, you know, they just, they did what they did. And that's what helps to inform you, like what's adequate for the neighborhood. You know, do you have to do come in and create everything brand new or can you do something that's in, in the middle like this house, or maybe it's more of like a rental grade rehab where you don't have to come in and do everything. It's just, you just clean it up, you get it ready to rent because this is what the neighborhood will support. And that's kind of what, what I call qualitative um, data that you can get for education is, is you know, seeing photos. Um, it isn't necessarily numbers, but it's like, oh, I can buy stuff from the MLS here. Um, looks like I can get away with kind of a middle of the road Home Depot type special renovation. Um, looks like Osama Raja is an investor friendly agent that works in this area. And so that would be somebody that I would want to work with if I was looking to do some deals in the Indianapolis market, because especially if I'm remote, you know, I want to find somebody who knows the markets. They know, you know, what, where the areas are at that you should avoid. They'd know, um, you know, like comping um, particulars of a certain area. Like sometimes, you know, we say like, you don't cross over major roads, right? You don't want to cross over the yellow roads that you see on Google maps, but you know, there are some roads that are, that are white that you don't look like major roads, but you're not quite sure. But Osama, would know 
because that's where he operates, right? So that local market information is really valuable. And so I would suggest that you come in and, and start look, you know, uh, considering using some of those agents. Now, another really cool thing that I want to show you guys, um, and I'll show you another market, is that we started to collect and aggregate local market um, investor-friendly agents that you can work with. So this market right here, um, it looks like we may not have uh, any agents that are privy users that you that opted in to get clients in this market. I do know we have agents in this market, but um, there's there's the combination of these agents here. And then I'll show you in another market what it looks like if there are actually your agents that said, hey, I'm looking for clients. Um, I'll, that's a brand new feature we just released as well. But on this house here, we know it now it's sold for 160. We know that you can get properties at 40% of the ARV or 44%. And we know what the rental comps are. So if I click settings and actually let's reset this. I'm gonna look at the rental comps right here. If I just click rentals, this now will show here all of the rental comparables. And if I sort by distance, we got now all the two bedroom, one bath houses that are within a certain tolerance of the square feet of the subject. So it's similar size, same number of bedrooms. That's one of the most important things when you're looking at rental comps as you're trying to match up those beds. And then bathrooms are important too, but we do um, match these up for you. And so it looks like these range anywhere from, you know, 750 up to about $1,200. Um, and then a house that rents for 1200 bucks probably is in way better condition than the house that's renting out for 700 bucks. So here's a, a 1200 square foot rental property. You know, it's, it's not completely remodeled. It's a little bit, you know, dated, um, but 1200 with a renovated house compared to 750, this is when it's the closest. It's also, it's actually in the same street as the subject. This one is not nearly as nice. So you can see here where you can start to look at a house and say, okay, if, if I want to get closer to the 1250 square foot or 1250 um, per month rent, I'm going to need to have nicer stuff in there. Uh, if, if, if I have a house that's maybe just like cleaned up like this and Maybe they've done a little, some updates they got for make a countertops and, you know, unmatched appliances. And it's just not, you know, it's not great. Maybe they put some carpet in there. You know, they got wood paneling, the bathroom's older. So really good information. So that way you can figure out, do I want to invest the money to get to $1,200 a month? Then you can figure out what your break-even point is, right? Like, well, okay, well, it's $750. That's 200 feet. That's about a $500 difference between this and that. And so if you determine, okay, well, you know, if I put $10,000 into a house to get it to look nicer, then it's going to take me, what is that? 10, well, let's look at the math, right? So $500 a month more times 12, 6,000. So a little bit over a year and a half before we would break even on that, which I think is a good investment, right? So that's what the data tells you. So that's one of the other really cool things about the rental data is it's got really good photos in most conditions because these come from a data source that's really high end. Um, and you can see here that this one particular listing has came from a property management company. Right. So what better place to get good data than from companies that their business is rental properties. Right. Um, so researching the last properties in the market that have, have been fixed and flipped will help you figure out what they're buying them for, what they're selling them for, what what kind of condition is adequate for the neighborhood. If you are doing wholesaling, it helps you build that buyer's list because we can look at the section here on the before or I'm sorry, the public record data we can see who the flippers are. So this one was flipped by Lux Properties LLC. So if I'm a wholesaler or if I'm a landlord and I decide that I'm just, I don't have the bandwidth to, to buy a new rental property right now, but I get a good deal. Well, Lux Properties would likely take this property from me for a small assignment fee. And so even if, you're, if, you're, if your strategy is landlording, that's, I think that's a word I just met up. But what if, you're, if your strategy is landlording, then 
you know, don't pass up a $5,000 assignment fee because you don't have the bandwidth or the resources to do another rental property. So you can build high quality buyers lists for wholesaling, regardless of your extra strategy, using this data. You can see where the hottest areas are. You can get the rental comps and you can also find amazing deals. So like I said earlier, the best way to find deals is to find that unrenovated home that's next to the renovated home. And then the sky's the limit. You have lots of options. Um, if I was going to pull a list, so we've got off-market leads as well. So over here in the filter, we can come down to the filter. And down here, we've got uh, several different options for off-market type distressed seller leads. So zombie properties, vacant homes, um, 20 uh, plus matured listings. Those are just people that have owned houses for at least 20 years. Foreclosures, interfamily transfers, um, absentee owners, bank-owned properties. So there are other opportunities there to find distressed situations where you might be able to get a better deal on a house. So we give you up to 10,000 uh, downloads per month with the normal pricing that you get from Privy. 10,000, way more leads than the average person needs. Um, but uh, we really wanted to go above and beyond. That also could be used for building buyers lists. So this right here, there's 281 buyers on this screen. So I can just click the download button It'll export that 281 properties into a CSV file. And then I can start to market to that. I could send a mailing campaign to them. I could um, you know, go and do a skip trace. I could just um, go knock on doors, put together you know, a, a driving for dollars map and go knock on people's doors. It's up to you. So these lists can be you know, marketed to. You can use them for your own internal kind of like mini CRM. Um, but we give you up to 10,000 per month. Okay. Now, earlier I mentioned you can get on market leads. So if I come over here and I click find similar active deals, this is a proprietary button that is unique to Privy. You're not going to find that anywhere else. There's not another platform that I know of where you can have an algorithm find you deals. And you're the one that defines what a deal is. Now we've got a default deal by clicking this button. It's going to plot on the map where deals potential deals are, and then you can adjust it. So if I was to actually go in and look at some talking um, or looking at some of the, the sold fix and flips, I'm going to figure out that I need to be at a certain percentage of ARV for it to be a deal. I'm also going to talk with my team to see what, what numbers make sense for my own deals. But also if I'm going to do a couple wholesale deals or that's my business, I'm going to talk to my buyers and they're going to tell me what a deal is in that, in my market. So I, this is all adjustable. So you can adjust this for, you know, you can have a certain number of bedrooms, bathrooms, you can have, you know, your built tolerances, you know, do you want houses that have basements, no HOAs, you know, maybe you want houses that have been on the market for at least 60 days. We've got days on market filters. Um, you can use keywords. So if you wanted to load a keyword for TLC or fixer up or, or mold or asbestos or whatever you want, keywords. Um, you can customize this. Now, the default discount, we set it to 75% because that's about where properties start to become deals in most markets. But in this market, let's say I talk to my buyers or I talk to my team and they say we need to be at 60%. So let's go ahead and rerun this at 60% of the ARV. And now it's comparing the price of the homes to the price of the comps. And then some different properties here. So this house right here is listed for 219. We'll flag it as a deal. This one's listed for 109. And we flagged it as a potential deal. So because the, for the, the simple fact that it shows up in the results means that we flag that as a potential deal. We compared the ask price of the house to the price of the comps. And in this case, at 109,000, that means that we have comps over a certain price. So for this house, we have comps over 181,000. So that's that's the math that the system is doing for you. So if I come down here and I look at the comparables here, the one the ones that are blue have comps over 181,000. So right here, see all these ones that are over 181. These are properties that that are that are showing this as a deal. So if I actually sort by distance right here, 
looks like this is a comparable. Um, it's a flip. You can tell it's a flip because you have the before and after. So one of the strategies that we teach people is the reverse REI strategy. And it's kind of like earlier when I told you to focus in on those big bubbles, you want to go to those big bubbles because what ends up happening is that you end up getting houses that are part of your comp set that were flipped, which makes it really easy for you to determine what the after repair value of a house like this is compared to an unrenovated house. So for the simple fact that we have these renovated houses are part of our comp set will help us determine what the after repair value is. We can prove that to a buyer and we can also use this data to prove it to an appraiser. So you should always be thinking several steps down the line. Is, is a house that I find in this neighborhood going to have a good ARV? Well, if there's no flippers in that area, then you're not going to be able to prove that. And that means it's an area you shouldn't be looking. So this house has an after repair value right in the well, 220 to 230 range based off of these comps here if I were to average them. So if we're in that area, we're, we're well below 50%, which is below the 60% that I told the system that I wanted a deal to be below in the first place. So that's how simple it can be to find like these really amazing deals. Like you don't have to bang your head against the wall. You don't have to go out and spend a bunch of money on marketing campaigns. You don't have to be an expert cold caller and get on the phone and have those really uncomfortable conversations with people who just don't really want to talk to you. And, you know, we've all heard the horror stories of people getting, you know, cussed out or, you know, told to get off their property or, you know, it's, it's really, a, it's a long-term play. And you have to be good at sales to be successful in the off-market marketing game. And uh, I'm sure everybody here can learn to do that. We're, we're entrepreneurs, right? We know how to, how to hack and how to create solutions. Um, and if that is your goal, then you should certainly do that. But what we are able to do is to find these low-hanging fruit, like this house right here. It's got a good price um, at a good discount and would be a great property for multiple different strategies here. So I'm seeing this property would be good for obviously a wholesale, could be good for a fix and flip. Um, you can also always propose creative deal structure. So creative deal structure is just one of the ways to finance a property. So if you write an offer on a house like this and you don't want to pay cash, you don't want to use an assignment to wholesale it and you don't want to get a loan, in the financing terms, you just say in there, seller financing. Right. And then they can, you know, say no or they can counter. Right. So that's always an option. Now, if we look at the rental comps right here, we've got rental comps here that go all the way up to $1,395. Now, this one's a 2 1. Um, so the 2 1, this is the, the closest one went for $725. We got a, a 3 two that went for 1400 and we got some other ones here that went for a thousand and um let's let's look at those and see the condition of those homes so that's more of a duplex type type home but those are still relevant this house here went for a thousand dollars a month but it's you know really dated so in an unrenovated fashion we're going to be between you know eight to nine hundred dollars a square foot on on a house like this that's unrenovated if we can fix it up, then we can push it closer to that 1,395. And that's where we're gonna to need to be for the numbers to make sense. So the rental data really starts to kind of open up your options. Now, the other thing to consider is if you are doing creative deal structure, the rents is one of the important things that how you're gonna determine and run your numbers, whether you know if seller financing is gonna make sense because with seller financing, you get to use the interest rate that they're already on for their current mortgage. Um, if, if it's subject to, if it's if it's free and clear, then it doesn't matter. But if it's, it's subject to, then you're gonna have to you're gonna consider that. So that all, that potentially lowers your potential mortgage payment and your your expenses and your costs, which gives you a better chance of having a margin there. So knowing these rental rates is going to be good for our uh, subject to and seller financing people in the group as well. Okay, so um, the rental comps will show up if they exist in those particular areas. Where it gets really interesting is up here in the filter. 
So we looked for an investor activity areas first to find the hot areas to give us options, right? Well, we got a brand new filter right here that says long-term rentals. If I click that button, it switches over. And now the KPIs or, or the analytics that we use to analyze what a deal is for a rental property changes from a percentage of ARV to these four major categories. So there's four major ones and two of them are used more often than, than most. So the very first one is cap rate. So the cap rate or capitalization rate is comparing the net operating income of the property compared to its purchase price, right? So cap rates um, are used on, on um, income properties, they're used on residential, they're used a lot on commercial properties as well. That's one of the things that we have here. So um, the default is actually a 5% cap rate. The other one is cash on cash return. So a cash on cash return takes into consideration expenses, um, but also the cash investment on a property. So if the house needs work and you're going to put money into it, then you're going to want to use the cash on cash return more than you would a cap rate. Now, that just shows you those two things. It doesn't take into account uh, equity or appreciation. That's where the annualized return comes in. So if you're looking at a property, you're going to say, okay, well, what is my property worth to me over a year? then annualized return is going to take into account the other things we just talked about, but it's also going to factor in the equity and the appreciation. So we factor in some assumptions like a 6% or 5% appreciation rate. Um, and then finally, you got the gross yield. So the gross yield takes into account all those other things, but it's also factors in the, um, the annualized gross rent divided by the purchase price. So these other two are a little bit more, um, you know, complicated, but all stuff that we can we can figure out, and we will hold more training on those down the road. But let's just say, for example, we did want to look at properties that we can get at a five, we'll say six percent cash or cap rate. So we put that in there, and then we put in other things as well. So let's say, for example, I don't want to pay more than two hundred fifty grand for my house. So I move it to 250. And then maybe I want to make sure it's at least a two bedroom, at least a one bathroom, it, it, whatever it is that your buy box is or your buying criteria, or if you're wholesaling, talking with your buyers. Now, earlier I showed you guys how you could find fix and flip buyers, but we also know in Privy who all the landlord buyers are. So down here underneath these filters, when I showed you how you can pull um, you know, distressed seller leads, Absentee owners is one of those options. Absentee owners is another name for a landlord. It means that they own their house, but they don't live in the same property that they own. So they compare the two addresses. They compare the subject property to the mailing address, and that's what creates an absentee owner. These people are great buyers. And you know what's great about landlord buyers? They don't have to get a property at 60% of the ARV or lower for it to be a deal because they're factoring in that second level of what a deal is for them. And that's the cash flow. So yeah, everybody would love to get a deal, but a landlord might be happy at getting a property at 90% of the ARV, as long as it's at a 5% cap rate, or as long as it gives me $300 gross monthly cash flow. Right. So it's it, there's different layers there. And, and the way you know that is by talking to your buyers, if that's your wholesaling. If you're getting deals for yourself, then you know you'll have to talk to your team and figure out what capitalization rate or what cash on cash return percentage is appropriate for your particular business model. It also varies based off a of market. So I was talking with uh, one of our partners and he's in San Diego and he's like, man, most investors in San Diego, they're happy with a three to four percent cap rate. And we're like, wow, like that's pretty amazing. And he's like, that's just what the market is. So in, in a high priced area like San Diego or Los Angeles or San Francisco, lower cap rates are appropriate. In the, in the Midwest, you might have to be, you know, at 7% for it to make sense for you, right? Because, you know, you're factoring in the acquisition cost. That's one of the biggest, um, you know, contributors to these rates is what you're buying it for. So let's go ahead and run that 7% cap rate. 
um, I don't want to spend more than 250000 And let's say we want the property to come on the market in the past six months. You know, if you wanted to do, you know, a, a season listing, like 60 days on market, it's that's up to you. You can, you know, you can play with these things. Let's go ahead and run this search. So previous to going in right now, and now it's analyzing all these properties from this perspective. And we have some properties here that could make good financial sense. So for example, this house right here, you can buy it for 74 grand. Looks like the rents range from 825 to 850. And then we calculate the different, based off those ranges, the range and the rates as well. So if there's a range in the rates here, we give this is between a seven and 8% cap rate, between a five and 6% cash on cash return. But then when we factor in all the stuff we talked about earlier, you can see the annualized return really jumps up because we're, we're factoring in all those other things that we love about rental properties like appreciation and um, you know the proper the, the amount of cash you put in the property and and the amount of equity that's there. So you know, this one looks like a pretty good one. So if I click this property card, it opens it up in the comparative market analysis. You can see here that this view is different than what we had in the past, right? So um, before we didn't have these on the comparative market analysis, but because I chose that specific filter, it does adjust this for us. So we have all that here. And then when we scroll down into the comparable section, it shows us those rental properties. So this one has two rental properties that are similar to that. We can actually adjust this. And if I click the all button there, we can see here there's actually there's more rentals that are that we didn't consider rental you know close rental comps to start um, because of the variances in the number of bedrooms and bathrooms. But this is other data that you can see here that we just hit. So you know always uh, when you're looking at the CMAs, you know I don't know if it's always, but it's a good practice to just kind of see everything that's in the area so you can get a gauge on you know whether or not you're not you're seeing the whole picture. So this property is likely going to rent you know, in that 825 to 850 range. And then down below that, we have a section here with the, the um, assumptions. So the really cool thing about this is our, our team never stops. I don't, I don't know when they sleep. sleep. Like our, our developers are just the best in the business. We're really fortunate to have our team, but they're already working on phase two of this release. And in phase two, you're going to be able to come in here and edit all of these assumptions to adjust the purchase price, you can adjust the occupancy rate. You know, if you have, um, you know, maybe somebody told you, you know, if you can find a house, um, you know, I'll pay a thousand dollars a month, right? And and so you can adjust, you know, the, the the amount that you're putting here for these different expenses, the rents, um, and the calculations. That's something that we're working on. I'm looking to release that here in the next few weeks. Um, so that's really exciting. Again, we're always we're always stepping it up. So this property would be a good one. Now, let's say I found this property and I'm like, man, I want to write an offer on this thing. So you can just come in here and click share. And then you might send this to your real estate agent and they can just click this link down here and they can open this same comparative market analysis up on their computer and see all the same information that you're looking at. If you're a real estate agent yourself and you want to send this to a client, same thing. Um, if you are looking, thinking about, well, boy, I need to get a loan on this house. I got the 20% to put down, but uh, I'm going to need, you know, the other 80%. So you could send this to your lender. So lots of different use cases for that. If you're a wholesaler, these CMAs are shareable um, to your buyer's list. Uh, and again, they don't have to be a preview user to be able to view these. And so you can all operate and work together. So that's just an example. Right, so if I wanted to save this search and get updates on properties that as they come available, I would just come in here and click save search, give the search a name. I'm gonna call this Indie Rental Deals. And then I wanna know about these every day. So I'm gonna click every day. You can get updates every hour. Um, and then you can organize these by putting them into folders. You can organize all your deal flow. And so I just click save. And now that's going to trigger email alerts to show up in my inbox whenever a property matches my deal criteria, whether it's a, a rental property or it's for a wholesale deal or it's for fix and flips or if I'm an agent and I want to send lead, um, deals to my clients automatically, I can do all of that. 
um, let's do this in another market. Let's say um, like Chicago. And then let's go ahead and reset this here. What I want I want to do is I want to show you what it looks like when we have the agents. So this is one of the other brand new things that we just added. So we all know that it's it's way easier to to work with investment properties when you're working with an agent that understands real estate investing, right? Either they're investors themselves or they've worked with a lot of investors before. And it can be problematic and troublesome to find agents because agents love to say that they're good at everything. I've done that in the past. You've seen an agent's card. They've got all of the designations in the bottom of their card. And it says, oh, I'm a foreclosure specialist. I'm a listing specialist. I'm a buyer specialist. I'm a short sales specialist. And it's like, okay, you're a specialist at everything. But that probably means you're not good at any one thing, right? So we started and launched this new feature. And this is going to be able to be, to grow and grow and grow because we're going to be out there looking for more investor friendly agents. And you can open up that information here. And uh, we can see here, here's here's um, straight, uh, State Street Capital Venture uh, Ventures. There's their contact info. Uh, we have a bunch of agents here you can choose from. And these are all investor friendly agents that know how to use Privy, which I think is even another level above what you might find from the normal investor-friendly agent who maybe won't know like how to use a CMA that you send. So like State Review Ventures, if I come in here and click share and they, they get the CMA, they know what they're looking at because they know how to use Privy, right? So that's another really cool thing about it. So that's really exciting too. So, you know, look at your local market. These are only going to be in those blue areas where we have the direct to MLS data. If you were in like North Dakota, um, you, you're not going to see that we've got this, this agent information because we don't have the direct to MLS data there. Now you will see rental comps in, in our third party MLS areas because we that data set, that partnership with our new partner is nationwide. So regardless of, of the direct to MLS, you'll be able to analyze properties from a rental property perspective. So um, a couple of last things on this so we can get you guys out of here. If you ever want to run comps on any property, um, whether it's sales comparables or rental comps, you just type the address right in here to the search bar. We do have a mobile optimized version of Privy. So if you're in the field and you see a property that you know, has the grouse overgrown and mail is falling out of the mailbox and you're wondering, man, what's going on with that? Just pull out your phone and type the address right into the search bar, and it will build a comparative market analysis and pull comps for you. Um, we also have the ability to upload lists. So if you're sourcing lead lists elsewhere, from not from Privy, maybe you get them for free from the county, or if you got a, a probate attorney buddy that is sending you lists, you can click upload right here. And you can upload hundreds, even thousands of properties into Privy. <coughs> And it will build a comparative market analysis, analyze all those properties in seconds so you can take action on those. That's um, a really powerful, really powerful feature, uh, feature that we have that not many people use because it's we're doing it on scale. But um, always a bunch of new features coming out. We're launching new markets all the time. We're up to 97% um, coverage on, um, on MLS data for markets. Our third-party areas, um, just increase probably, um, actually, I don't want to put a number on it, the, the, the quality and the updates of the data, it just even in those areas like Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, just went up considerably with a, a new data partnership that we have too. So we're going to continue to add more and more features. Um, yeah, just the amazing tool for you to find deepest discounted deals, to find uh, properties that have good multiple exit strategies from being a fix and flip to a creative deal structure to a wholesale deal to now being able to analyze properties from a rental perspective and making sure that those houses meet your metrics for how you measure what a good deal is for yourself, whether it's cap rate, cash on cash return, annualized return and gross yields, getting updates automatically to your inbox uh, every single day so that you can take action quickly. Um, the sky's the limit. 
So I'm um, really glad you guys could be here with us tonight. We're going to give you an opportunity to get in and get signed up. Matt, did you have any questions? No, man, it's beautiful. I, I know pretty well now, but I like all the new features. It's, you know, I'm a cash flow investor mostly anyway. So this is really helpful. Amazing. Well, let me grab some links for your people here. And then um, we, we have a promo code for you guys. So you can get in and get started at a discount. Um, one second here. And then actually, um, for those of you that need to take off, uh, thank you for being here. Um, but let me grab those links for you. And then for those of you that do have questions, feel free to put those in the chat. And I do have a couple of minutes here to be able to answer some of those questions. Uh, are there any questions in the chat, Matt, that um, you know? Yes, yeah, uh, James is asking, them, what if you are already on annual membership? If you're already on the annual membership, then you get these rental data uh, filters for free. It's automatically in your system. It's already there for them. Okay, cool. Super. If you're on the monthly plan for Privy, you will need to upgrade to get access to the new rental features. If you're not a user yet, then um, we'll get you started here. Uh, with a, a discount. Right. Any other questions? We got to take advantage of uh, Benson while he's here. He's a wealth of information. He's got a great tool. He gets around. He knows a lot about what's going on in the market and what investors are doing and their best practices and how they're using Privy to, to get their deals done. Any questions, fire away. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, Lilia asked about uh, multifamily dwellings. Do we have any of that uh, data inside of Privy? Oh yeah, we've got a multi-family data feature. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll show you that here in one second. Yeah, what is this? Uh, Marcus is asking about video tutorials. What does the support look like for Privy customers? Oh, we've got a ton of on-demand, mm -hmm. um, a ton of on-demand training, tons of live training. If you decide to come on with us today, you'll actually get to be uh, on our, our live mastermind trainings. Are the investor agents vetted for understanding numbers? No, they're not. They're not vetted. They are, they're privy users and they say that they work with investors. Got it. Got it. Um, someone's annual membership is about to renew at the end of the month. How do they renew that? Is there anything for them to do? They're asking for your contact information. What's the question? Um, what is your contact information? My annual membership is about to renew at the end of the month. Oh, it, it's a support at teamprivy.com. Support at teamprivy.com. Yep. Thank you. Awesome. So there we go. You're going to use promo code EPIC. And so if you decide to sign up with us, um, we'll take 20% off your first month mm -hmm. to be 119. And then it's 149 a month after that. If you sign up for the annual plan, we'll take 30% off only if you use promo code EPIC. And that brings the annual price down to 1252 for the year. Awesome. Again, that does come with all the training. So we do live training twice per week um, for at least an hour. Um, so it, you can come in there, you can ask questions, it's live. And then we got a ton of on-demand training, uh, training tutorials, videos, articles, a bunch of stuff that you can use to get up to speed. Super. Well, thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate everybody being here. Um, let's see. Did it... Oh, for, um, let's see here. Somebody was asking about features for multifamily properties. So here oh, in the yeah. filter. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, give me a like there. That would be fantastic. See how many we can get those up to. I feel like the YouTube hasn't been kind to me lately. I don't know why. Yeah, so here's the multifamily. There we go. So you choose multifamily. 
And then um, that'll show you, you know, multifamily houses, two units and above. Awesome. Any other questions? Looks like that's all. Looks like that's it. Yep. Well, Benson, you have a have a good night. Thank you for being here. And uh, thank you for everyone that was here. Uh, Chevy, and Chris, good to see you guys. Liz, good to see you. Jason, Lilia, Marcus, Mark, Paulette. Y'all have a wonderful night. And if you need anything, um, you head over to that uh, the little link that uh, Benson gave you right there. Or you just go directly to the support at Team Preview if you need something special. And then, you, you know, of course, I'm here for you guys always as well. All right. You have a good night. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, everyone.